Okay, in this video, I want to explain how we remember that an input has been activated using an internal memory. Now, we're going to do this in RS Logix 500 using a B3, but you could use an internal relay in RS Logix 5000 or Studio 5000 or any, any programming product you might have out here. So this is the goal of what we want to create. We want the, uh, we want cylinder one to extend down, automatically retract, and then cylinder two to extend. Now, the thing is, is that cylinder one had to have already extended and retracted before cylinder one is allowed to actually move. So, how am I gonna do that? This cylinder is a 5-2 solenoid activated spring return. This cylinder is a double solenoid activated, so it doesn't need memory to stay in its position that is desired by the programmer. Here you can see that I have this set up to where the cylinder will automatically retract. I hit the button and it automatically comes back because it hits this cylinder one extend limit, which is this right here. So I activate it, it goes down. So both of these actions have to happen, and this is why understanding how to run an internal memory is so very important, all right? Because we need to remember that this was activated and then be retracted. I can't use my limit switch one here for my cylinder one because that's always activated. That would extend right away. So this is how we overcome this problem, and this is one of the most powerful tools in programming for discrete inputs and outputs. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab an input here, and I'm gonna use the extend, the cylinder extend limit. So LS2 right here, all right? And that is going to activate a memory circuit, all right? And so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna use a B3. I could use an N7, but B3s are for bits. So it's a, I personally think that using a B3 is the proper way to do it in RS Logix 500. So I've gone ahead and typed in the, uh, a description here, internal memory for LS2 cylinder one. Hit okay. I'm gonna come here. Now I have this B3 locking this in. Okay, so I'll zoom out here a little bit so we can see a little bit better. So now when this comes down, it's going to latch this memory in. So then when this memory is latched and LS1 is activated, then the cylinder can extend. So let me add that into this. I'll come here, drop this in. So when I have my B30 activated and my limit switch zero. Now I'm changing the address here. So this will be cylinder one, retract limit. I'm gonna hit okay. So when these two are true, then solenoid uh, 2A can extend that cylinder, which is output four. This is SOL 2A, all right? So now when I go to download this, let's see what happens. Now this is not functioning. This is just the first step in running this. So let me zoom out a little bit more. So hopefully you can see a little bit better. So when I activate the start button, it extends, comes back, and then that drops out. Now notice that it had to extend and retract, then it came out. As far as I know, this is the only way that this can operate. I want to retract the cylinder when it extends, cylinder two when it extends all the way. So a couple of things have to happen. First, I have to uh, have that LS2 for cylinder two to go ahead and knock that out right now. So that is cylinder two extend limit. That is going to shut this down, which will then turn this off. Let's see how this works. Okay, so I'm gonna activate the start button. All right, the cylinder will extend, locking this in. That memory will latch in. This will extend the cylinder. And then this will, then when the cylinder is, when cylinder two is all the way extended, 
it will drop off this memory, turning off selen solenoid 2A, which is what is used to extend the cylinder. Okay, now I have the ability to actually retract the cylinder. So to do that, what I need to do, add a new rung, and I'm going to use the cylinder to extend limit to activate output five. And because of the type of directional control valve this is, it will retract all it has to do is be put into place. So let me go ahead and download this and we'll see how it works. All right, so I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna hit the activate the start button. There we go. So you can see this now, I have a system where it is a sequence that, it, that is set up. So I want the cylinder to extend, retract all the way. The next one will extend and retract all the way. There is no way that I know how to do this as easily of just, then just dropping in memory. Now again, if this was Studio 5000 or RSLogix 5000, you could just use an internal relay there. Here we use the B3 because that's the most productive way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope it, I hope it helps you out with your um, programming needs. All right, and if you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe. Thanks a lot.